We begin today with reporting that the NBA players have decided to resume their season. But today's games will not be played, as every team in the playoffs will have sat out at least one scheduled game. Wilbon, your thoughts on the players' decision to resume the playoffs? Tony, I don't want to say I think it's the right decision. It is certainly the decision I agree with. Um, you know, I am of a mindset and a strong one that you don't give up your platform. And it's interesting. Look, I, 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 I say that knowing that people are at wit's end and they're trying to figure out, okay, you're telling me what not to do, but what can we do? What should we do? Because whatever we've done to this point has not been enough because we keep getting the same result month after month after month after month. What should we do? And just in talking to players that are closer, former players and coaches and executives, closer to my age, people I've known in some cases all my professional life, they tended to agree with me more that you don't give up your platform. I mean, the reason people are paying attention is because you've got the threat of the leverage. Sometimes the threat of the leverage is greater than the use of the leverage. You, you have this threat out there, and people worldwide, we're about to examine how many players and leagues and all these things have said, wait a minute, we're, we're not playing either. So the NBA players have done the right thing by saying, stop. We are screaming as loudly as we can, stop and examine this, and we're going to put this off. But to the decision to play, Tony, is very important because that keeps the attention trained on their focus and their energies and their idealism, all of which I applaud, but I think they need to play. Yeah, I'm going to go back to yesterday for a second and talk about the Milwaukee Bucks who started this whole thing because I think it bears talking about a little bit more than we did just that group of people. I understood why they would be the first group to say we're not going to play because Kenosha, Wisconsin is in their home state. But that seemed very spur of the moment to me, and I say that because the Orlando players came out to play. So, so this was not league-wide. This was the Milwaukee Bucks. And they didn't just say, we're not going to play. What they did was they held a phone call with the attorney general of the state of Wisconsin, and they tried to find out, can the police officer who shot Jacob, can he be prosecuted immediately? And then they said, we want to get the state legislature back because we, we are very concerned with what's going on here. So they went through the, si the system. I applaud that. They had yeah. a specific goal in mind, and they did it, and, and I thought it was enormously effective. I did. Tony, I agree with you. And just, they also have worked with their owner, who they know is connected. I mean, with, with, with in, in every political way, with law enforcement officials, local yeah. and statewide. And I think, again, this, is, this was smart. You're right. And the use of it, the use of the leverage. And they didn't just, you're right, they didn't just leave the locker room and say, we're going back home to pout. No, they were trying to no, get something. no. Immediate done, Tony, and I applaud that's them, too. Very, that's very important. Absolutely. That, that and the Bucks that. do deserve yesterday, that credit. You're right. We talked about the long play yesterday, and you said you weren't sure of the long play. And I've thought of the long play. And I think it's politics. I think it's registering to vote and yep. voting. And not just voting in the presidential election, because that's not nearly as meaningful as going up and down the ballot and your local elections and identifying candidates that you think articulate your point of view and then seeing if they can get anything done. There was one other thing that I wanted to say yesterday and I didn't. I see, as you do as well, there are lots of signs in my neighborhood. People like to put signs out. I am not a sign person. So I'm okay with other people doing it, but I have not been a sign person. Every day when I walk my dog, I go around the corner and I pass by a house, a black family's house, and in the front window is a hand-lettered sign, and it says, stop killing us. And I gasp, Mike, every time I pass it, I gasp. Yeah. Yeah, Tony, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you tell that story. And I don't know, I don't gasp anymore. I just sort of stew. And I think that this is what we saw from young athletes, and when I say young, I mean people a lot half our ages. This is what we saw. We saw them joining this process of stewing and of being so frustrated and so dismayed and so disconsolate. You don't know what to do. 
And again, this goes back to something I said during the aftermath of George Floyd. You got to hear me. You, you've got to hear me. And this is what now you have all these teams saying, and most of them in this bubble. And whether people are going to hear them or not, Tony, I don't know. Just because you demand people hear you doesn't mean they hear you. And this is the frustration that they're learning that previous generations of protesters had learned. And so, you know, you hope that at some point the insistence of hear me leads to someone hearing you. But a boycott doesn't guarantee that, Tony. Protest doesn't guarantee it. Signs in the window don't guarantee it. This fight, this is a long, hard fight. I was almost going to use the word war. I don't want to use that, but it's a fight. And it continues. It does.